we're back. And in this segment, we are going to discuss the Justice League and Supergirl. And the Justice League issue has been pretty interesting. Supergirl is just starting to get rolling on to where she might, uh, where her direction of her series is going. I'm, I'm pretty honest with you. I'm pretty amped about Supergirl. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really neat, really neat, uh, you know, reintroduction to Supergirl. And Justice League's been doing really well, too. Yes. I'm, I'm struggling to wrap my head around everything that's happening in there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of non-human stuff going on. Yes. And a lot of questions that we don't have answered yet. So, Well, let's see if we can make heads or tails of this one. Justice League number four, The Extinction Machines Part 4. Well, The Purge has kind of made a connection with Cyborg, or Cyborg made a connection with The Purge, we find out that they're non-humanoid type, uh, a hive in a way, and they're trying to destroy the planet. And then we have uh, Superman, Clark, is in the center of the Earth trying to destroy these fail-saves that would destroy the Earth before the Purge has uh, succeeded in destroying the Earth or uh, taking it over, I think, because mm -hmm. the Purge is kind of a, they're, some, but kind of like a symbiotic type. Maybe they're not. The, maybe they are. The purge is trying to make is trying to eliminate humanoids. It sounds yes. like they're trying mm -hmm. to make anything human, unhuman, as, as cyborg terms it. Mm -hmm. And and there's isn't really any ex explanation as to what that is. Kind of until the end, yep. which we'll talk about later. But yeah, you know, and this is to seek out humanoids on mm -hmm. any planet. Yes, uh, apparently. Kind of to assimilate them and destroy them. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have the kindred are united, ready to sing their song. To is it to protect the planet? To not pro to make sure that the uh, the purge don't unhumanize to yeah. humans. It seems like the kindred and the purge are kind of two diametrically opposed right. groups. I mean, the, the kindred is made out of people. Yep. I mean, the, the ones we have, we've seen, they're made out of people. And here's invaders from space who are trying to eliminate people. Yep. So maybe, I mean, maybe one's, they're just trying to take out the other. And, and the kindred refer to, um, you know, when they sing, they haven't been able to do that right. uh, before a world breaks. Mm -hmm. you know, they say they haven't been able to do that in a long time, and they have to do it before the world explodes or whatever mm -hmm. but it's not really confirmed if that's gonna save the world wonder woman seems to think they're not up to any good she's right, still she's... stuck inside one of them and yep. i mean she says well i mean even if you succeed against the purge we're going to stop you with whatever right. your plan is we don't know what their plan is no all we do know is that they were able to sing i think in part because clark was able to take one of those fail-safe devices and imploded on itself. Mm -hmm. Yep. And also you've got, like, I mean, the Flash was taking out as many of those purge drones as he could. Mm -hmm. And, and um, Simon and Jessica are up in space yep. taking out as many as they can, too. So, I mean, they, they do mention even, even the Kindred recognizes that the Justice League, what they call the Powered, are, yes. are making sure they can sing. Yes, that's true. Um... Superman is obviously one of the focal points of this issue. Another is Aquaman by having those uh, statues. Yeah. Are they able to nullify the singing of the uh, kindred? Uh, the one kindred who met Aquaman said that was a song that he hadn't heard. Right. And he, he, that kindred seemed to sort of assimilate that song from the mm -hmm. Zodiac Crystals. And, and for a while, the crystals weren't making any noise to Aquaman. And apparently Aquaman's the only Atlantean who hears hear the Zodiac that. crystals making noise. But they are making noise again, it sounds like. So we'll see if that, if the Zodiac crystals help. Right. Or, I mean, if they affect the Kindred or if they affect the Purge or what. But, it, I mean, it kind of seems like in the end, Superman and Aquaman might end up being sort of the two big heroes of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, Superman's taking out the fail-safe bombs in, the, in Earth's core. Aquaman's getting there <laughs> yeah, he's getting with there. the Zodiac crystals. He's, he's still swimming and taking care of Atlanteans, but he's 
he's getting his way there. Well, the Green Lanterns, like you said, are at the planet, and they're taking out as many of the Purge as they can. On Earth, Cyborg has kind of tuned into their frequency, and he faints, it looks like. We see him, all of a sudden, we're, the last few pages is, we're back on the alien planet, and Simon and Jessica all of a sudden say, something happened, Cyborg's unconscious at on Earth, but it looked like his essence uploaded through the Purge's network, yeah. and now they're a bunch of humanoid, cyborgish looking uh, creatures or figures all over that planet. Yeah. Has he become kind of like in the Matrix? Has he jacked into their network? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Has he Mr. Smithed himself <laughs> into their network, and now there's just so many of me? Yeah, yeah. And they're not just cyborgs in a generic sense. I mean, they're modeled after Victor yes. Stone as cyborg with, you know, his little emblem and his sort of half half face cybernetics. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a little mind blowing. It's a little mind blowing for Simon and Jessica. Yeah, because they they're like, whoa, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what do we do now? And and it'll be interesting to see if because it, it it makes it sound like that's maybe what the purge did to make humans unhuman yes and now they're cybernetic or or did they just avoid the purge and is this going to be like a resistance against the purge right <laughs> it, 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 it's points like this it, justice league for the last few issues i read it and i have that look on my face like <laughs> whoa what, huh right <laughs> like, okay <laughs> yeah, i mean every every issue seems to ask a few more questions yeah. and we haven't gotten all these answers just yet i agree with you i think justice league right now will be one when all the issues are done with the story we'll be able to read it in one sitting and say oh this makes sense but mm -hmm. right right now there's some good parts of it mm -hmm. overall it's confusing until we get the completed story arc to sit and read yeah that's where i'm at with it as it, well it does make you want to read the next one though yeah i mean for me i as confounding as it is i still want to see where it goes i mean right. what happens what answers will you give me right <laughs> you know make them quick please before my before my head explodes <laughs> from any more giant people made out of other people and giant swarms of alien robot things yeah <laughs> yeah and where how will this impact the dc universe as a whole Mm -hmm. when this story arc is wrapped up. Yeah, because it does look like it's pretty much just the Justice League handling this situation yes. when there are so many other heroes floating around. Right. That's that's kind of interesting, but it is a Justice League comic, so... Yeah, so we'll see issues ahead if the story gets a little bit more cohesive or if Josh just has a meltdown from trying to put all the parts together. Mm-hmm. Yep, Tom might know that if he texts me and... My head might just be laying on my keyboard. I've <laughs> been reading too many Justice League comics. We'll see. <laughs> Supergirl number one, Reign of the Cyborg Superman, part one. Well, this establishes kind of a different take on Supergirl. Is she's back again? Yes. She, this is New Fifty Two Supergirl. She's been around in the comics for a while. In continuity, she's only been on Earth for a couple months. And she's having real trouble fitting in. She doesn't quite get the language. She doesn't understand the technology. I mean, she, she's struggling to do anything. And it kind of occurred to me, this is the first Supergirl we've met who had a Kryptonian upbringing. Yes. She went to school on Krypton. She spoke Kryptonian. She used Kryptonian technology. Now she's, she's downgraded. Big time, Essentially, yes. yeah, yeah. New language. Um, I mean, she compares a projector to a, a stone tablet. I mean, she, she's struggling to do anything. Uh, you agreed. She, uh, <laughs> she just is trying as best she can. Mm -hmm. And she's trying really hard. When she is, uh, she hears a robbery going on, she immediately takes off and foils it. But... Cat Grant was there, and Cat Grant was saying, you just, 
interfered in what I was doing. I had these people where I wanted them. And then the uh, DEO, mm -hmm. yep. the DEO came down on her too, saying that that was an unauthorized Supergirl uh, action mm -hmm. activity. And it needs to be sanctioned. You just can't go running half cocked. And it was very interesting because she wants to do good, but she's being held back. She wants to fit in, but she can't because, man, it just, it's an interesting take on Supergirl. Yeah, yeah, it's its very different. It's its also funny, too, because it makes Supergirl, when she's Kara Danvers, yes. basically like Clark Kent, you know, mm -hmm. kind of the bumbling, can't get anything yes. right. But, I mean, like Superman kind of did some of that intentionally to keep people off Mm -hmm. you know, off the trail as being Superman, she doesn't really have any control. No. <laughs> she, she, I think that those are honest, you know, honest uh, mistakes on her part. Yes. The first time we see Cat Grant, and she's already going after Supergirl, I think they're setting her up to be the constant foil in Supergirl's life, where no matter what you do, I can do it better, I can do it more efficiently, I can do it... It just better. You're, there really is no need for you to be around. Yep, yep. It's a lot like the um, you know the uh, TV series mm -hmm. Supergirl, um, with Cat Grant almost being like somewhere between a Lex Luthor and a J. Joan Jameson. Yep. With, with this, you know, I That's hate true. you. I don't necessarily want to kill you yet, but I'm 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 that just anti Supergirl um, right mantra she has because Kara. Supergirl is feeling so out of place. There's the one place where she wants to go to make herself feel surrounded by what she knows, and that was the Fortress of Solitude. Well, while she's there, the cyborg Superman appears and tells Kara, I can bring you back to where you want to be. And cyborg Superman is Kara's father in this uh, iteration of it, which was kind of kind of unique where somehow there's a lot of damage done where there's cybernetic implants, but he's wearing the, the House of Al shield and he looks like Superman. Yeah, because he doesn't resemble Zor-El in the flashbacks. Right. I mean, he's, he's got black hair mm -hmm. like Superman. Zor-El looks like he has more of a brownish hair or, or even reddish. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how exactly that happened. I mean, it, it makes a heck of a lot more sense than classic cyborg Superman, Hank Henshaw, right. the, um, you know, pilot of the doomed Excalibur shuttle mission, which I have to, which I read on like every single trading card used that exact same mm -hmm. phrase, doomed Excalibur shuttle mission, <laughs> you know, then comes back, right. f ends up fighting Superman, supposedly gets killed, comes back looking like Superman mm -hmm. as a robot, pretends to be Superman, gets exposed as a robot. And, and it, it, it's cool. It was, it was a cool story arc. It made sense. In the new 52, it, it, that really hasn't happened yet. No. You really can't introduce Hank Henshaw no. and have that make sense. No, but you can use uh, the cybernetic, the cyborg style of Superman in another, for another Kryptonian. So will this cyborg Superman, will he be constant if it is indeed Kara's father and uh, claiming back to go back to Argo? Or will it be a one and done kind of like the Eradicator was in the recent Superman storyline? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that how that plays out. I'm hoping he's a longer lasting villain. I mean, the concept yes. of a cyborg Superman is pretty cool, and it's mm -hmm. a it's a cool look yes. too. It's so menacing with the you know cyborg right look on a guy who's you know steel, supposedly indestructible. It's it's mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's it's a pretty scary thought, but we'll we'll see where it goes. I agree, yeah. Supergirl, a couple issues in. Your thoughts? It's it's a nice, it's a neat origin. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully this is the one that sticks. I mean, uh, Supergirl's come back more than once now, but this, yeah. uh, I think this has enough differentiation from Clark's origin that, I mean, she's still trying to find her place. You know, Clark had the benefit of coming here as an infant. She comes here as a teenager. She has to acclimate herself. Right. She's not growing up with Earth custom. She's getting used to that. I think they finally realize that with, mm -hmm. with this origin. We'll see what happens with Supergirl, how she fits in or doesn't fit in in the weeks ahead. We are going to take our final break, and when we come back, 
we will discuss Superman number six. We'll be back in just a moment. 